Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death worldwide, with 17.8 million deaths per year in 2008 and a projected 23.3 million per year by 2030. Statins are the most commonly prescribed drug for prevention of cardiovascular disease, and currently there are more than 40 million people worldwide on statin medication, including 40% of Australians over the age of 65. So what are statins and can we all benefit from taking them? Cholesterol is a type of fat used by our bodies for important everyday functions, such as making hormones and building and repairing cells. Cholesterol is transported in the body by lipoproteins, HDL, which is a high-density lipoprotein, or your good cholesterol, and LDL, or a low-density lipoprotein, which is your bad cholesterol. HDL cholesterol is beneficial because it helps move cholesterol from cells through the blood and into the liver to be processed or excreted from the body. LDL, on the other hand, carries cholesterol from the blood into the cells of the body, and this can become deposited in your artery walls, causing a buildup of cholesterol known as plaque. This may ultimately cause your arteries to narrow in a process known as atherosclerosis, and may eventually result in angina, heart attack, or stroke. Grade A clinical evidence and the result of many studies has determined that high plasma LDL cholesterol must be the primary concern in prevention of cardiovascular disease. So how do statins work? Statins reduce levels of LDL production in the liver by competitively inhibiting the action of HMG-CoA reductase, an enzyme which is a key component in the manufacture of cholesterol in the liver. HMG-CoA reductase normally catalyzes the reduction of acetyl-CoA to mevalinate, a sterile precursor which is eventually transformed to cholesterol. Here with us today we have interventional cardiologist Dr. Delina Mai. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So what would you say the advantages and disadvantages in taking statins? The value of statins in preventing heart disease has clearly been established. Their benefit is indisputable, but they need to be taken with care and knowledge of their side effects. Large-scale statin trials have demonstrated significant decreases in LDL cholesterol and a reduction in major cardiovascular events. Specifically, major coronary events are reduced by a quarter irrespective of age and gender and across a wide range of cholesterol levels. Overall, you're looking at a 1 in 5 coronary deaths being prevented through statin use. However, all drugs carry side effects. For those at high risk of having a heart attack or a stroke, the clinical evidence shows that the benefits of lowering cardiovascular risk with a statin medicine outweigh the risk of possible side effects. So can you talk us through some of these side effects? Sure. There's mus mild muscle pain or weakness known as myalgia. Um, which is one of the most common side effects of statin use, occurring in 5-15% to 15 of patients, whereas um, more severe muscular side effects such as myositis or muscle inflammation or rhabdomyolysis, which is muscle breakdown, have been, uh, have been reported but occur very rarely. Um, so I recently watched a program regarding statins and kind of controversial risk of developing diabetes. What are the risks? So there is a slight increased risk of developing diabetes um, that has been identified in statin studies. In a recent trial involving over 91,000 people, there was one extra case of type 2 diabetes for every 255 people treated with a statin over four years. However, the review also showed the benefits of taking a statin to lower cardiovascular risk greatly outweighed the possible risk of developing diabetes. And what about overprescription of statin medications? I mean, are they just encouraging people to give up on their lifestyle modifications and take a quick fix? In recent years, there has been a lot of debate um, surrounding overprescription of statins. However, the guidelines from the National Heart Foundation emphasise the importance of risk assessment in guiding clinical decisions, and they recommend that lifestyle modification is trialled prior to commencement of medication unless the patient's absolute risk dictates otherwise. And by absolute risk, I mean the probability of a patient experiencing a cardiovascular event within the, the next five years. So providing Australian doctors um, prescribe in accordance with these guidelines, overprescription shouldn't be an issue. So let's say hypothetically you have a patient that comes in with high cholesterol. How do you um, choose to treat the patient? What are the, what's your method? So first you have to um, see what um, risk level they're in. So there are three levels of risk. So the first is a low risk, which is lifestyle intervention. Moderate risk, which is lifestyle intervention initially, then consider pharmacological therapy after six to 12 months review. And high risk, which is a lifestyle intervention in combination with pharmacological therapy. So in, um, when you're... So what are some of these lifestyle modifications that you've got to make? 
Okay, so diet such as reducing fat intake to less than 30% of total energy intake, reducing saturated fat intake to less than 10% of total energy intake, no smoking, increased exercise, and obviously moderate to low alcohol consumption. So in your opinion, could we all benefit from taking statins? Well, prevention is key. Therefore, management of modifiable risk factors, as I said before, will all reduce the risk of developing high cholesterol and subsequently the risk of cardiovascular disease. Statins should only be taken when absolute risk in dictates it necessary. In this event, yes, we can um, benefit from taking statins. Great. And um, one last question for you, Doctor. Regarding new generation statins, are there any genuine advantages? Well, currently there's one commercially available third generation statin, which is risovastatin, known as Cresta. Um, clinical trials have shown that um, risovastatin has um, enhanced inhibition of HMCOA reductase, um, re resulting in a greater efficacy at reducing cholesterol and has even been shown to be superior to other generation statins in reducing LDL cholesterol, um, triglycerides, and increasing levels of HDL cholesterol. Great. That's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for coming in. The efficacy of statins in lowering cholesterol and thus reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease is indisputable. However, pressure now needs to go on our doctors to follow correct prescribing practice to ensure that the right patients are getting the right treatment.